Okay, so uh, we have uh, understood how a uh, DC to DC buck converter operates in discontinuous conduction mode, right? We have also seen that during discontinuous conduction mode, its average output voltage is going to be more than what it would be if the converter is operating in continuous conduction mode, right? Same converter. Now, what we would do in this video is we would find the specific value of the average output voltage while converter is operating in discontinuous conduction mode. So uh, let me draw the, the circuit. This is your output voltage, this is your switch 1, this is your diode 2, right? So as we understand that the inductor current in speaking about DCM here, right? So the inductor current would start from 0, hit a P, come back and then remain 0. This is your D times TS. So this point is TS, right? And this is the point where the current becomes zero, right? Let's let's call it gamma times TS, right? Now let's also draw how would the voltage across inductor would look like. So in the first period, S1 is on, right? In the second period, D2 is on, and in the third period, both of them are off, right? Both of them are off. In the first period, when S1 is on, the voltage across inductor is going to be V in minus VO, right? This is V in minus VO. And when Diode is conducting, in that case, the voltage across inductor is going to be minus VO. And when in the third phase, when the current has become zero, so di by dt also is zero because current is zero and it is maintained at zero. So di by dt is also zero. There is no slope of current and therefore the voltage across inductor is also zero. So this is zero. First period V in minus VO, second period minus VO third period zero. Now we need to find the average voltage so we can assuming that the circuit is operating in steady state we can apply the volt second balance right and then we can write V in minus VO into DTS plus minus VO into gamma minus dts plus 0 is equal to 0. If I simplify it, I get V in minus VO into D is equal to VO times gamma minus D. Right? I can further simplify it. <clears throat> I can write it as V in D minus VO D is equal to VO gamma minus VOD. So this term would cancel out. And what I will get is VO minus V in is equal to D upon gamma. Right? Let me call this equation here as number 1 and this one as number 2. Right? So equation 2 gives you the relationship between the output voltage and the input voltage in terms of d and gamma right as you see if gamma is equal to 1 as gamma tends to 1 that means you are talking about critical conduction mode then vo by v in becomes equal to d which was the uh, expression for a continuous conduction mode or critical conduction mode right uh, here you can see that gamma is always going to be less than ts less than 1 
and therefore vo is always going to be greater than d times vm in dcm which also uh, qualitatively we saw in the previous video so far so good now the only uh, thing that is remaining is we don't know what is the value of gamma right if we know the value of gamma then we can solve for vo so how do we find the value of gamma we use another expression which is the average inductor current is equal to the average load current right i can write this as what is average inductor current it is the area under the inductor current right that would give me the n multiplied by a uh, divided by ts would give me the average inductor current so i can write this as half into base into height divided by ts will give me the average inductor current equal to the average load current which is vo by r i can simplify it i can write it half gamma by 2 so let me bring vo by r on the left hand side vo by r is equal to gamma by 2 Yes, yes, will cancel out delta I L. Delta I L is V N minus V O L D T S. Right. So essentially, how I am writing delta I L, I am using V N minus V O L delta I L by the duration, which is D T S when S one is on. Right. So I am substituting delta I L from this expression into here right and uh, uh, that's it i am so so you can now uh, yeah so this gives you another equation between gamma and the other parameters right let's call it equation number three now we cannot solve for gamma just from three because there's v in this vo expression also here so what we can do is we can substitute some part from one so using 1 and 3 right essentially if you use 1 and 3 you just need to solve for there are two unknowns you, you see everything is known so known things are uh, r right v in l p s these are known and duty cycle right because you can set the duty cycle if you remember pulse width modulation you can set the duty cycle right and what is unknown Unknowns are gamma, right, and vo. So there are two unknowns, two equations. You can just go ahead and you can solve it. Let me let me sort of just go one step ahead. I would not solve it completely, but just let me go one step ahead and show you the solution. So, for example, I can use one and three, and I can substitute the value of v in minus vo into d, right. From one, which will give me V O into gamma minus V. V O will cancel out, and I can write this expression as L by R T S equal to gamma square minus gamma D. And further, rewrite it as gamma square minus gamma D minus L by R T S equal to zero. Right. Now I can write the solution of this quadratic equation. The solution of this quadratic equation is gamma is equal to d square minus four two. Right? This I can further rewrite as d plus d by two plus minus. Under square d by two whole square plus two l by r t s, right? So this is the solution for gamma in terms of known variables. Once you know gamma, then you can substitute gamma into equation two, right? And you can get the value of output voltage. The only thing is, uh, if you solve here, you will get two solutions of gamma. And and as you understand that gamma value is between one and it is greater than t, right? 
so 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 depending on the two values which whichever fits in this bracket that is your correct value of gamma and then you can substitute gamma on the on equation 2 to get the value of output voltage right your answer one thing which you can see is that gamma as you increase the value of r right as you are increasing the value of r that means you are in discontinuous mode but you are further reducing the load right or further increasing r your if you further increase r your gamma value becomes smaller and smaller as your gamma value becomes smaller and smaller your output voltage given by equation 2 becomes more right so in continuous conduction mode the output voltage was almost independent of the load resistance i am saying almost because in the ideal scenario it is but if it you are talking about actual then there is a role of output resistance but in ideal scenario it is independent of output resistance but in discontinuous conduction mode even in ideal scenario the output voltage depends on the load resistance and as the load resistance increases the output voltage also increases right okay so uh, i think this is how you find the average voltage now a uh, few things i want uh, you guys to try out yourself uh, one is that find vo in dcm boost and bug boost right this would take you some time but i would suggest you to at least find solve it find the final equations right second thing is find delta il and delta vo the inductor current ripple and the output voltage ripple in discontinuous conduction mode buck boost and buck boost right so once you do all three you would have sufficient practice right and and you can then solve for let's say any other converter or any other circuit also right so i would want i would suggest you guys to try both of these yourself and if you have any doubt you can ask me during interaction sessions thank you